Hello, and welcome to The Cube, live from Seattle, where we're going to be talking about what's going on in AI and customers and how they're thinking about AI. And really, one of the big topics is responsible AI. And today, I'm joined by Karthik Bharathi, who is the director of Amazon SageMaker, and Chris Wegman, who's the managing director of Accenture AWS Business Group. And I, I think one of the things that I've been talking to a lot of different organizations over, over the past year, and one of the things that has really kind of stopped them from getting from POC to production is really understanding how they can do it responsibly and understand how to get from here to there and make sure that they understand lineage and other things that go along with it. I think one of the things, you know, in Karthik is really what has been the impact of Gen AI on the customers and kind of their buying decisions and really how have you been seeing trans you know, traction within those Gen, Gen AI products that you guys have? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, Rob. So at the outset, Gen AI is a type of AI that lets uh, customers generate new content or user stories. Um, and fundamentally, what's driving or powering these Gen AI is a model, just like a machine learning model, but one that is trained on large number of parameters on vast amount of data, and it's known as the foundation model. Now, when customers look at Gen AI, they see the potential to integrate that with their applications to offer new services, um, but they're running into several challenges. One, they want to be able to leverage the best foundation model for their use case. They also want to do that at the lowest cost without you know, spending a lot of time in setting up the infrastructure and um, spending a lot of cost. And three, they want to use their data so that they can customize these foundation models for their use case. So with machine learning, what we did at AWS was to democratize it and meet customers where they are. And uh, we have over 100,000 customers using machine learning on AWS today. We're taking the same principles, making them available to Gen AI so customers can embrace these Gen AI tools and services that AWS has to offer. One of those use cases that we're hearing today is on how customers can build AI applications more responsibly. Yeah, and I, I think that to me is one of the keys that we see is, especially when they're using kind of the crown jewels of their data in there. Uh, Chris, kind of help us understand kind of where Accenture plays with responsible AI and really your 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 view on responsible AI. Yeah, let's let's start by talking about what is responsible AI, right? So we, we know in cloud and in in IT all the time we talk about security. Is my data secure and things like that? You got to look at responsible AI much broader than that. It is actually looking at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. It's looking at it from ensuring that I am not creating bias. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm meeting all the standards that are in the market, which are changing very, very rapidly. And I can continue to monitor it and see how it goes throughout the process. We see a lot of customers, you know, who are going to use multiple models. You know, it, maybe in the inter enterprise space, they could use, you know, have a hundred different models. They might be small. They might be large. Um, but you can't just rely on just having a governance board to look at those AI models when they choose them. You've got to look at it throughout the process and how those models change and mature and, and, and kind of just go through the learning process. You've got to keep looking at that. So from a responsibility perspective, we look at it in, end to end. We look at it making sure that the developers look at it as they're doing it, as well as all the way through the risk teams uh, and ensuring that there is no bias, there is no impact because you know, AI is impacting, it's going to impact everything, right? It's going to impact people. It's going to impact government. It's going to impact everybody. It's going to have an impact and it has to be, uh, it has to be responsible. Yeah. And I think that you hit on a, a hot topic for a lot of people is the whole, the whole bias and how things are, you know, really uh, challenging from that perspective based on how the models are trained and things. And like you said, uh, you know, size can vary. Uh, from small language models to large language models, but also the fine-tuning and fine-tuning on the data and what data it gets fine-tuned on. What are some of the key industry verticals you're seeing responsible AI really, you know, be a, a driving force within there that it's it's critical for them to get from that POC to production? 
Yeah, I think over time we're going to see responsible AI in every in every industry. I, I don't think there's going to be an industry that it, it's not going to be applicable for. But you know, as you can imagine, uh, you know, right now in highly regulatory uh, environments like public sector, like uh, like life sciences, um, you know, that's where it's really starting uh, starting off, and they are setting a lot of the a lot of the examples, uh, and they're the first ones that are looking at this stuff end to end because they have to. Uh, because, you know, whether it's in financial services and there's regulatory requirements, um, you know, whether it's it's country requirements, we see the EU having its own standards, we see NIST, we see other standards that are coming out. All that has to be applied and, you know, mainly in the regulatory areas where we're seeing it start. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. In fact, those are some of the, uh, I guess you could say, organizations, the public sector in particular, where they kind of got passed by by digital transformation a little bit, but really have really taken a, a hard look at AI. And so it makes sense that responsible AI. Uh, so Karthik, kind of uh, help us understand partnership between AWS and Accenture and really how this is driving value for the customer. Yeah, absolutely. So Accenture and AWS have been collaborating for several years now. And over the last several months, we've been looking at how customers can scale their Gen AI adoption more responsibly. So uh, in August of this year, um, we announced the launch of the um, Accenture Responsible AI platform powered by AWS services. What this means is customers can use the RAI platform with services like Amazon Bedrock and Amazon SageMaker in order to assess their readiness for Responsible AI. Um, NetNet, you have the expertise from Accenture along with the robustness and reliability of AWS services coming together to help customers adopt Gen AI. Yeah, I, I think that's key because when you look at it, there's only so many people who understand the full end-to-end -end nature of that because there are so many personas that are actually play within the AI from you know data engineering, platform engineering, all the way up to data science. So you know, Chris, kind of expand on that relationship and why, you know, Accenture really built its responsible AI platform powered by AWS. Yeah. Um, so, you know, of course, as, as Karthik said, we have a long relationship between AWS and Accenture, uh, well over 14 years. Um, you know, Accenture was actually one of uh, AWS's first customers. We started leveraging S3 uh, to, sort, to store things like our expense reports. Uh, so we have a long history. Same thing from Accenture. We've been using AI in different parts of our business for for a while, and the concept, um, you know, of this responsible AI platform came from our own experiences, right? Um, we obviously have seven hundred fifty thousand people. Um, you know, we operate in in almost every major country, um, and we had, you know, we had to find a way to make sure that all these models that are getting created you know, are being created and run in a responsible way. Um, so the, the concept of this platform came from that, but also came from our customers. Uh, as we, we started working in, and we've implemented, you know, thousands of, of AI use cases, uh, we saw a couple of things. We saw, number one, they get stuck, right? They get stuck uh, going through reviews, getting the risk reviews, the legal reviews, the security reviews. Um, and that's a very manual process in a lot of cases today. Um, so we, we kind of went back and looked at the partnership and said, okay, we're both uh, doing these POCs, we're doing these AI, where are we getting stuck and how can we work together to unstick them? Uh, obviously, Amazon's got the technology, uh, leveraging SageMaker and leveraging Bedrock. Um, you know, So we, we were able to take that technology, take our approach to responsible AI uh, and put them together together. Um, and then take that to market together. So we, we both are in, you know, thousands of customers working together. We're able to talk to them about how this platform will help them accelerate uh, and get these POCs into production where the value is really going to be driven. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's, it's a great testament to our partnership. You know, we were one of the first AI competency partners for AWS. Um, we've been the launch partner for many, many competencies in AWS, and it allows us to accelerate um, you know, building these type of platforms. Yeah. When, Karthik, why don't you touch on the competency and what it's about a little bit? Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, Amazon has this uh, Gen AI competency center. We have, um, we started off with 
40 partners like back in March. Accenture is one of the key partners in, in that uh, competency center. Um, what we do is um, we help customers be successful with um, building Gen AI and adopting those Gen AI solutions across different verticals and use cases, um, how they can quickly build a minimal lovable product and embrace it as part of their workflows. Um, that's something we've been doing. Uh, we have over 156 public customer references of customers who benefited from the Gen AI Competency Center. Yeah, and I, I love MLP. I, I'm a big fan of minimally lovable versus viable because you want the customers to love it out, out of the gate. And maybe that's my background having been here as well. But yeah, I, I think one of the things that's really interesting is, and, and I think you kind of touched on this, is that there's some key governance, risk, compliance, and security considerations that people really have to think about when they're you know embracing Gen AI in particular. And usually it's not just Gen AI, it's Gen AI with, you know, what we call traditional, I guess, or ML in the back. And there's some interactions there. How does this really get taken into account that kind of the risk security compliance aspects of it from responsible AI platform? So the platform's very, very built around the kind of end to end steps, right? So through design, through development, through execution and and reporting, right? So I always think about, you know, from a, a coding perspective, I come from a coding background, right? Once you wrote the logic, the logic was the logic, right? It didn't change. So you knew that first time you went through and you, and you looked at it, ran the security checks, you know, did the testing, you knew the answer that was going to come out, right, of that of the code. Well, with AI, that, that answer could change over time, right? And we create things like guardrails. We get very, we get really good at, at doing prompts so that the, you know, the that they don't get, um, you know, hallucinations and things like that. But when these things start running through, you know, hundreds if not thousands of transactions, they have they can change, right? As more as they get more data and things like that. So the platform really looks at, you know, that ongoing review, making sure that there isn't bias, making sure that it's hitting standards and things like that. And giving the users, whether you're a data scientist, whether you're a, a chief compliance officer, could be a legal person, um, you know, it gives them that view they need to take action. Uh, and in some cases, they can take the action in that tool and it will go and, and take the action as needed to get it back into compliance. So you set the compliances, you leverage the standards that are out there so you can go to the, you know, go to the regulatory agencies and say, I'm meeting these standards and here's the reporting to do it. Uh, and again, Accenture is using this internally. This is how we report to our board and show uh, what we're doing and that we're using AI responsibly. Yeah, I, I think that you know speaks volumes when you can say, hey, we're, we're not only uh, the producers of this, but we are actually using this and you're you know going back to your board. So Karthik, kind of help uh, the folks at home here to understand where some of the challenges that can be solved by Bedrock and by SageMaker and kind of how that works. Yeah. So if you look at what customers look for and we work backwards from their needs, they want a choice when they want to select different foundation models. Um, they also want to make sure that they have the infrastructure at lower cost, lowest cost, like I mentioned. So if you look at the three-layer Gen AI stack, at the lowest layer is the infrastructure innovation. And that's where Amazon SageMaker comes in. It's a fully managed uh, service for machine learning where customers can build, train, and deploy ML models at scale. Um, you have capabilities like SageMaker Hyperpod, which lowers the training time by up to 40%. And you also have capabilities around ML ops, where customers can use um, SageMaker pipelines to have rep repeatability in their workflows or use like managed ML flow when they're running experiments to lower the cost of infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, we also offer the latest hardware with uh, EC2 P5 instances. We have in-house accelerators like AWS Trainium and AWS Inferentia. The next layer of the stack is where customers can opt for the choice of foundation models. If they don't want to build their own models, but start with what's out there with some of the industry-leading model providers like Anthropic or Meta's Llama models or AI21 or they want to use Cohere models or Mistral models. There are a whole suite of models that they can choose from. And within a few clicks, 
directly deploy it in their environment or they can fine tune those models and integrate it with their application. Bedrock also offers a suite of tools, um, like we have agents where customers can compose their orchestration across different services. Uh, we also have guardrails, which is very important from the context of responsible AI, where guardrails let customers safeguard their ML applications, um, look for topics which are denied, how do you handle PII data, or how do you handle harmful content or toxic language and so on. There's enough controls built in so customers can use these capabilities with their genetic apps. Yeah, I, I think this, to me, it's bringing it all together. Is that where you see this the responsible AI platform coming from? Is that, hey, you have the parts and the pieces, you're, you're going to want to, you know, most people are hopefully aren't going out and building their own large language model unless they're one of those startups. But you would see that they want to fine tune things. They want to then, you know, be able to, go, they want to ground it and then fine tune it in right. that. And is that really where power of this platform is coming in? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, it, it is bringing and leveraging, you know, all those foundational services and, you know, uh, bringing those and exposing them in a way that, you know, users, you know, again, from developers all the way through, you know, uh, the C-suite can understand what's happening, right, in those models as they go versus, you know, just um, just relying on, okay, I've got the guardrails in place, right, I'm good, I look at it once and I'm done, right? And I think when you do that, it, it kind of, it puts you in a box, so to speak, right? And you don't let that model do and you don't let the AI do what it's good at, right, is learn and continue to uh, mature and continue to, you know, bring new insights uh, with each transaction. Um, so yeah, that's exactly right. That's where the platform comes in and brings that all together. Yeah, I, I think that is uh, really key to a lot of organizations who are out there that are really trying to and have struggled with these pieces and how they pull them together and how they do it responsibly. Because that's like you said, they have to go to their boards where they have even you know more so they have to be able to explain it to their customers and be able to be you know hey this is how we do this in a safe and responsible way and really do that. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on board today and helping, you know, from our AWS uh, studios here in Seattle. I really want to thank you for being on board. Thanks for having us. Yep. And thank you for watching this episode of The Cube live from Seattle. We'll be back with more, so stay tuned.